Welcome back. A couple weeks ago I made a video on how to make puppet hands. It had a free pattern in it and it showed the whole process of making them including the arm rods. In this video I'm going to go in depth on the process of making the arm rods and the exact materials that I use and also I'll put the links to the materials down in, in the description. And if you use those links it actually helps out the channel a lot. For the wire part of the arm rods I use this 330 seconds with welding rod. A link to these rods is down in the description. Now they come to be about 36 inches long so what I start off doing is cutting them in half but they also come with their edges stamped. It's kind of hard to tell but it's kind of flattened. You're going to want to chop off that piece too. That'll end up leaving you with two rods about 16 inches long. Now to cut these rods I use a rotary tool. This is one I highly recommend. It's the 12 volt Milwaukee rotary tool. And what's nice about this is it actually uses the same batteries as my drill. So it makes things really convenient. And even this drill is really nice too because it's a little smaller than your typical big heavy duty drills. So it's perfect for puppet making and when you go into making puppet mechanisms as well. So highly recommend these. Anytime you're using a rotary tool or a drill, it's important to have eye protection. I personally never liked having goggles on my face, so I found the perfect thing. These face shields are great. And what I love most about them, because the goggles, you, you bring them up and down, they leave marks on your face. But this is so easy just to bring up and down. It makes it a lot more convenient while working. It's always important to protect your eyes. I'm gonna start off just by chopping this in half. Now that I have two equal pieces, I'm gonna cut off those stamps like I told you. Right there, it's a little flattened. I'm just gonna cut those off so they're about even. When you're cutting the metal like this, the rods can get hot, so make sure they cool off before you touch them or the pieces that fall. So now these rods are ready to go. For the handles, what I use is 5 8 dowel rod. I found that handles about 5 inches long are the most comfortable. After you're done chopping these down, it's important to sand the edges so it's a little bit softer. You don't want it to snag on the fleece of a puppet or get caught in the fur. So it's important to take down those edges and even kind of round off those tops a little bit just like that too. Next I'm going to drill the hole to insert these rods. Now when you do this you actually, uh, I prefer not to have them right in the center. Okay, I have them off center which kind of creates a natural little handle for your thumb to rest on. This can also help with manipulating the puppet. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark this right about there. There on one of them, okay, you can see that. There you go. So that's about where I want to drill these holes. Make sure you keep your fingers far away when you're uh, drilling the hole. It's best to get like a little starter hole slowly and then Then you can just send it down in. Make sure you drill them at the same depth. Since the drill bit is the same width as this piece of metal, it has a nice snug fit. Here's a little tip that'll make your arm rods last a long time. In one of the first puppets I made, I used epoxy to put this rod in, and after a lot of usage, this rod actually began to spin inside of the wood. So one thing I decided to do was to put little grooves in the part of the metal that goes into the rod. That'll keep it from twisting. So that's what I'm going to do right now. So I used the Dremel tool to make three little notches on each side. And there you have it. Let me bring this up close so you can see. You can see those tiny little notches. That'll keep these, uh, these, um, these rods from spinning inside the wood. Now to attach these rods, please do not use hot glue. It's just not gonna hold up. Epoxy creates a much stronger bond and it's not very expensive. There's a link down below. If you are gonna use epoxy, make sure you are in a well ventilated area because there are some fumes that come off of it. It's a good idea to use gloves when using the epoxy as well. Now you're gonna wanna have two equal parts of both of these. It's a 50-50 ratio on mixing these. So there's my part A, I'll put in my part B. I just kind of do it by eyeball, kind of creating a bubble about the same size. Now, I can't stress how important it is to thoroughly mix these two 
parts evenly. That's the only way it's gonna get an even cure. That being said, you can't take too long mixing it because you have only about uh, five minutes. And sometimes, depending on how long it's been on your shelf, it can go a little faster. And now what I'm gonna do is roll this side in here. And push that in. Just like that. I'll do the other one. I like to push it in once to make sure all the epoxy is on the inside of the wood. I pull it out, re-dip it, and put it back in again. And to save yourself some sanding, it's good to have some paper towel handy just to kind of wipe it clean and uh, create some lumps from forming while it cures. Once the epoxy is secure, I give the whole thing a nice light sand. That allows the spray paint to have a much stronger bond. At this point, all that's really left to do is to spray paint them. If you want to see how I put the armature onto the finger wires, you can watch my other video on making puppet hands. I personally like to bend the top of this into a P shape, so it looks kind of like that. And here they are, all painted. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, and if you have any other tips, let me know in the comments. See you next time!